Hey everybody, today Rado runs through hardback, which is the prequel to paperback, which um, I've already done a run through for, and if you ever saw it, you know that Jen and I absolutely loved this Dominion meets Scrabble deck building game, and now um, a, a, well not a sequel, a prequel to it has come back that uses some of the same ideas, but comes up with a radically different gameplay formula. Uh, hardback, which like I said, is the prequel. And I'm going to be doing a run-through of it today because it's on Kickstarter right now and you might be deciding whether you want to back it. Um, now, I've already got the game set up here. I'm going to be doing a two-player. Before I get going, though, I should say everything you're seeing here is super hardcore prototype. Um, you know, the game obviously does not come with Dominion cards. What I've just done is I've, uh, you know, printed out on a laser jet all the, the, the whole deck of cards and I've put them on some Dominion randomizer cards with some sleeves just so you can play. So bear in mind, the real game is going to look nicer than this, but, you know, this will do to get an idea, but you can go on and hit the I up in the top right corner screen or follow the show notes to check out the Kickstarter page to see what the real game looks like. And this isn't everything. If I actually pan up here a little bit, you can see the game comes with a scoreboard because this is a race game. We are racing to be the first to score 60 points. And by the way, this is temporary too. I believe the real one is going to look like a big bookshelf, a uh, big bookcase full of books. So that's really nice. Also, we've got some ink and ink remover cubes over there. We've got the bestseller certificates, and then we've got our big ginormous deck of letter cards we'll be drawing from over the course of the game. So that's the game. I've already got it set up. We have a new two player. Here's my starting deck. Here's Jen's starting deck. And now everybody gets mostly the same starting deck. We get an N, an A, an R, an S, an L, an I, a T, and an E. Uh, we all have these in our starting deck. And each one of these cards, if used to help spell a word, will give us one penny. One cent, which we can use to buy other letters, put them in our deck so we can make bigger, better words. And of course, all these new letters have cool special powers. Now, everybody has these same, but then we also start with uh, two randomly selected. I ended up with an H and a P. Jen, I uh, say I don't know what she got. I haven't even looked at her deck. I just uh, did it randomly. Uh, oh, she got the O and, da, 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 and, and a G. She's the OG. And I am the HP. All right. So we go on ahead, we shuffle up our deck, and we are off to the races. Like any good deck builder, you have a hand of one, have five. One, two, three, four, five. And I'm the first player. Let's go. What do I got here? Well, I have an A, an E, an L, a T, and an I. And the nice thing is, you can just see at a glance what all these do. Every single one of these cards makes me a penny, which I need to be able to buy. So if I could make a word using all five of these cards, I would make five cents, which I could then use. Heck, I'd be able to afford this letter C, which costs five. Or I'd be able to afford this letter M and this letter S, because this costs three and this costs two. Wouldn't be able to afford this L, though, which costs eight. That's a pretty expensive card over there, which means it's pretty powerful. All right, so here is where the fun starts. Um, although I'm just going to apologize right now, folks. I am terrible at word games, absolutely horrible. I'm sure everybody's already looked at this and already come up with the perfect five letter word to use every single one of these letters. And now you're going to have to painfully sit and stare and watch me try to come up with something that uses all these letters. Well, right off the bat, I can easily see teal. So that's cool. That's four letters, which would give me four cents, um, but I would not be using, so I'd be throwing one cent away by not finding a way to put this I in here. Tealy? Yeah, I don't think that's a word. <laughs> not at all. Let's see here. Is there any um, I E um, of light? I, but I have to be English. Uh, uh, L E A, Liet, uh, Letty. T. Oh, what the heck with that? I'm, I'm going to put you out of your misery, folks. I'm just going to go for teal. All right. So I'm doing a four-letter word. <sighs> Although, actually, I should point out, here's the probably the most interesting, cool thing about this game. Um, right. I could go for teal. That's a four-letter word. But any card I want, if I can't find a good use for the card, I could flip it upside down, and now it's a wild card. So I could make a five-letter word now if I um, you know, turn one or more of my letters into wild cards. But the problem is if I use this as a wild card, then I don't get the one cent benefit off it. So even if I come up with a five-letter word by you know, changing this L or this T to a wild card or something like that, um, like, uh, uh, like, oh yeah, I could just turn this I into a wild card, it's an S, and now I've got steel. Hey, I steal you. Okay, so what the heck? I'm going to say I'm going with the word steel. Now, this is still 
Functionally, it's only a four letter because I get one, two, three, four because I don't get anything off this. But hey, I feel a little bit smarter that I actually came up with a five letter word. So my word, steal. One, two, three, four cents I've got. And now that lets me buy, um, let's see, I can afford, hmm, well, there's nothing that's out. This one costs three, six, three, five, two, three, and uh, eight. Right. So I've got four bucks. I'm going to spend three of it on this card, or this card, or this card, or two of it on this card. Now, here's the thing. You know, in a regular deck builder, if you have leftover money, oh, well, that's too bad. You just can't use it. In this game, every buck I've got, I can spend. Instead of on cards, I can buy ink. And these can be very, very useful in future rounds. So say I go on ahead and what am I going to buy? You know, I think I'm just going to buy the S. Uh, you know, this is less powerful because, well, it must be because it only costs two cents, but S is so easy to use. I mean, you can just put it in any word and turn it into a, you know, into a plural. So I'm pretty much guaranteed to be able to put this into words. So I'm going to go ahead and buy this S, which costs two. This goes in my discard pile. A new card immediately comes out. And, well, if it costs two, I could have bought that as well, but this costs four. So now I've got two bucks left over. I'll go on ahead and buy two ink, which could help me out in the future. Right, and then the rest of these cards go into the discard pile as well. Um, whether you use the letters or not, they will all go into the discard pile. And at the end of your turn, you draw back up. So I'm going to draw one, two, three, four, five. I've got my hand ready for the next round. So I can be thinking about my word while, um, while my opponents are taking their turns. So, all right, and at the end of it, I ended up with a letter S and two ink. And now it is Jen's turn. I haven't even looked at what she's got. Let's shuffle her deck up a little bit. You know, it would certainly help a lot if um, somebody was here actually playing this one, two, three, four, five. While I was actually doing all the explaining, somebody else could have already figured out. Because when it's not your turn, you are working very, very hard trying to figure out what the best use of your layers are. So Jen's got an S-T-G-I-N. And the interesting thing is, the G, if she uses that instead of getting money, she will get a victory point. And remember, this is a race to 60 points. So, what can Jen, um, oh, well, pff, all right, this isn't too hard. Sting, sting, sting. All right, Jen's got a nice five letter word. She doesn't have to make any wild cards, so that's pretty nice. So, she is going to make four bucks and a point. So, we come up here to the prestige thing. Jen just made her first point. She is in the lead, and she also has four uh, to spend with her sting there. All righty. So, what is she going to buy? She could just buy this letter B straight out, or an M and an R, and get some ink. Hmm. Now, so, I just bought when I bought solely based on the letter. Hey, it's a letter S. It's easy to use. I'm just going to buy it. I didn't think anything. But there is more that goes into decision than just the letter. Because every one of these cards is in one of four genres, literary genres. Let's see. Uh, da -da. And in fact, yeah, there's an example of every single genre out there. Um, let's see. What was the S I bought? The S I bought was a horror, um, uh, a horror letter because it's green. The horror cards, generally speaking, have powers that let that give you more control over how to use this ink because they give you access to ink removers, which can be a big lifesaver later on. Um, so, and the thing, yeah, like for instance, this letter P is a horror card. And when you use this in the letter, you get two victory points, or in a word, and you get to take one ink or one remover. Normally you have to buy ink, and you can never buy remover, but if you use this P, which costs three bucks, um, you can get ink or remover. And so that's pretty handy. That's what horror does. Uh, the romance, which are the red cards, and they've got this little heart right here for the colorblind folks out there. Romance, these are all, quote, trashy romance novels. So that means they give you the opportunity to usually trash your cards. So you can thin your deck down and try to make a stronger deck. Although they also sometimes give you card doublers, like which is what this one does, double an adjacent card. So that's what the romance does. The, um, let's see, here's a mystery, or I'm sorry, a horror. The mystery cards are the blue cards. Remember how I was talking, let's say um, Jen didn't have a G, let's say she had a, a Q, right? And so, but she still, uh, so she took the Q, turned it face down, turned it into a wild card so she could get Sting, and but then she didn't get to use the power of the uh, of the of the of the of this card because she had to use it as a wild card. What mystery cards let you do is they let you um, well, they let you do two things. They let you lock up a row card, an offer card, or 
they let you uncover adjacent. So if you have to use one of your cards as a wild face down, which means you don't get the benefit, but then you put a mystery card next to it, it lets you, after you've made the word, flip it back up so you can get the benefit of that original card. So, mystery cards give you a lot more flexibility for building words because you can, you can much more readily use wild cards to make any type of word you want, but then not suffer the penalty of, of you know, for going. So that's what mystery cards do. And then adventure cards, these golden ones, they are just the best way to make points. Often, they will give you points when you buy them, and they tend to make a lot more points as well. So they are just kind of the brute force. They're like the big money strategy from, um, from Dominion. You just buy more of these, it just speeds up your ability to score points as you race towards the end. And so, that's a consideration as well. Because here's the thing, most of the time, to be able to use the special power, if, if Jen were to buy this M, although she can't, she only has four bucks, if, if Jen were to buy this letter B, right, when she uses this B in the future, it gives her two bucks, it lets her lock an offer row, and it would let her get an additional two bucks when she uses it if she plays it in conjunction with another mystery card. So once you start buying cards of a certain genre, you want to keep buying that genre so you can make your deck strong in that genre so you'll get more opportunities to do combo bonus moves. And this is very much like Star Realms where, you know, once you start buying in a certain color, you really want to focus on that color to make your deck strong that way. Or, generally speaking, you want to focus on one or two colors and, you know, the, the, the fo colors you focus on will really kind of push your game in a unique direction. So anyway, all that was a prelude to Jen deciding which card or card she's going to buy. She's got four bucks, she's already earned her one point. You know what? I think Jen will... Jen's just going to go for adventure. She's going to buy the letter R. This gives her one point immediately for buying it, so Jen has made two points this turn. And this costs three, a new card comes out to replace it. Uh, the letter O, and she has one more buck left over, she will also get some ink. All right, and her turn is over. Right, all right, that wasn't too terribly bad. Now let's move on to the second round. Here's the remainder I've got in SRPH. No vowels, no vowels, okay. Which in a regular game of Scrabble would kill you dead. But remember, any one of these cards I can turn into a wild and make it a vowel. But I've got to decide. I've got both of my victory point cards in here. So if I'm going to turn one of these cards into a vowel to be able to make a word, do I want to get rid of a victory point or do I want to get rid of some money? Um, let's see. Because the best I'm going to be able to do out of this with no vowels is going to be able to make a, a four letter word. Let's see. Well, you know what? Um, I already have gone in mystery. There's a $3 mystery card out here. So, um, I think I better kill a victory point card so that I've got three bucks so I can buy this letter M and really, or the letter P, uh, and focus more on mystery cards so I can start getting bonuses off of them. So, that means I'm either going to kill this P or this H and try to make something out of SRN. Um, Although that's the other question, can I do that? Um, Ron's, I, I, oh, let's see. Or, or, oh, no, but, but I still have one of the other ones. Uh, S, oh, SH. Oh, the easy thing would be SHOP. Oh, but then I'm only getting one dollar and two points. Let's see here. So I want to use all three of these. I want to use the R, the N, and the S, and then one of these and the other one into a wild card. Um, S in uh, S nur, uh, S in uh, SH. Uh, sh, or, or, or sir, sh, uh, sh, uh, Shrek. No, can't use proper names, of course. Um, let's see. Snoo. Uh, the right of Snoo Snoo. No, that's uh, no Futurama words either. Uh, S in snail. Uh, a snail. Snedley. A snope. Oh, yeah. Oh, and this is uh, uh, sure. S oh, S H. Yeah, S H. Um, uh, S H. O R E. Uh, uh, shope. Oh my gosh. I want to use four. Now, if I want, I can just do the easy thing, um, you know, and just go with three, and then, hey, I got S-H-O-R-E. You know, easy peasy. But then I'm only making one victory point and two, so that's not particularly good. Hmm. Oh, I don't like this at all, folks. I'm not coming up with a good word. And I know, I know, I know, I know, believe me, I know you're all posting right now, um, you know, one of like five incredibly obvious words that I just cannot think of to get a good four-letter word uh, that includes uh, N, R, and S. Um, and, uh, and then either, 
I mean, heck, at this point, I'd be happy to do NRS, and then I'll turn both of these into wilds. Um, uh, Ron, Rom, Sn S, uh, Shone, S H O N E, but then I don't have any use for the R. Shiner, Shiner, S H, yeah, uh, that'd be uh, S H, S H I N. Ah, and I need one more letter. So, I got, all right. I got shin, and then I'm throwing this R away. I'm still not making it. Ugh. Now, if I really want to, I haven't talked about this yet, but folks, remember, I talked about this ink. I've got a couple of ink, right? Here's what you can use it for. While you're trying to figure out what word you're going to make, you can push your luck. I've got five cards in my discard pile right now, but if I want to, I could spend one of my ink, and what the heck, I'm going to do it. I'm going to go absolutely crazy. I'm going to spend one of my ink. That means I need my deck back. So I got to reshuffle my deck because I have to have a draw deck. So I'm going to reshuffle all my cards. I'm hoping I get that S out of there because that was a handy, uh, useful card. But anyway, I'm going to reshuffle my deck. I'm going to spend one of my ink. That means I draw. I'm going to now be able to make potentially a six letter word. And it's an I. And if I use this in the word, it gives me an extra buck. But here's the thing. I have to put the ink on here because whatever word I come up with, I must use the letter I. I am absolutely, if I cannot come up with a word that uses this letter I, I get nothing. My entire turn is bust. So that's how these ink are kind of a pushy luck. Because if I wanted to, heck, I could bring another letter in um, and use my other ink. Then I'd have to use both of these letters. Then if I came up with five, if I make a seven letter word, I will have a bestseller because if I make a seven letter word, I get five points at the end of the game. If I, but this is pushing my luck because if I reveal this, I have to use it. And what if this is some insane, and I, because I can't turn it into a wild card. Now I'm not going to push my luck twice. I got an I. Hopefully that will give me something, something that will um, allow me to make a six letter word using all these. Because hey, I have, an, I have a, a vowel now. So, I mean, heck, I, the very simple is S H I P. Um, you know, but then I got my N and my R. I'm not using them. I could turn them into wild cards. I could, um, oh, well, I could do a million things. But here's the thing, folks. I know you're all shouting at me. It's obvious what I should do with an S H I P R N, because assuming I could turn any of these into wild cards. But what I think I'm going to do right now is I'm going to take a little break. I'm going to stop right there. And if you'd like to watch a little bit more gameplay, you can hit that I in the top right corner of the screen, and we'll go to the extended playthrough. Or instead, you can go to Final Thoughts and hear what Jen I thought, and we'll draw some comparisons to paperback. Your choice in five, four, three, two, one.